Hello and welcome everyone to another technical video here on my channel. This video is going to be about something called the Yamaha system connector that can be found on many different home audio devices built by Yamaha. In this case it's going to be about the Yamaha YST SFW150 subwoofer but it's going to be the same for any other part of equipment that uses this system connector. And I'm going to show you guys a little more technical detail about this connector, how it works and how you can possibly hack it to work with other devices, since uh, by default it only is supposed to work with other Yamaha devices. So in this case, uh, I'm going to make it work together with a Nonkyo receiver, the Onkyo TXSR307. The reason I'm doing this is because when I tried to hack it um, or to do this mod myself the first time, I couldn't find any information about this connector and its specifications online, so I had to just had to guess. And so I want to give you guys the information I found out so that you, you can do a hack like this more easily. If you're following along and try hacking your devices in the way I'm going to show you, you're doing it at your own risk. I will only provide information here and what you do with this information is completely up to you. If you do something wrong while trying to hack this, you may damage your uh, subwoofer and or your amplifier. You will certainly void the warranties and you might even injure or even kill yourself since we're working with mains powered devices here. So only try it if you know what you're doing. So let's get into it. So what the system connector basically is, is on the back side of the subwoofer you find a 3.5 mm headphone plug called system connector. And I trace this out to um, the inside of the subwoofer. There is basically a relay up here. And this relay um, bypasses the power switch on the front. So there is a hardware power switch on the front, this one here. And normally when you um, have it not pressed or not engaged, the subwoofer is off. But when this relay clicks in, it overrides this power switch, so even if the hardware power switch is off, this relay can then turn on the subwoofer. So later on, once you have completed this hack, you will always have the subwoofer power switch powered off, so the subwoofer will only power on once you actually tell it to via this system connector. So the system connector is more or less directly wired to the input of this, um, to, the, to the coils of this relay. So in order to turn the subwoofer on, what you need to do is apply 12 volts more or less to the um, to this connector. So it's a stereo. You can use either a stereo or a mono three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Um, you just have to make sure that the positive voltage is applied to the tip, normally the left channel, um, respective to the ground, which is the outer ring of the of the plug. So you can also use a mono plug, then just use the only tip you have, plus 12 volt respective to ground. So uh, what you need to make sure of, or what you need to think about, is that this headphone jack ground, or the system connector ground, is the same as the signal ground. So it's the same as the outer ring of the coaxial input. So you really need to think about this so that you don't mess up two different grounds so that you don't mess up two different power supplies here. Um, what I did later on is actually use um, a galvanically isolated DC to DC converter to power this system connector to really get rid of any hummings that could be caused by ground loops. Because otherwise when you use another ground coming from your amplifier you're effectively going to create a parallel ground path or a ground loop and you can induce a lot of hum into your system and especially at low frequencies since we're dealing with subwoofers you really don't want to do that so this is why I ended up using a DC to DC converter but you can also do it just um, to just putting straight 12 volts into it so the question is now how can we operate this or how can we make this subwoofer turn on when we also when we just turn on our amplifier um, so the, as I said, the amplifier I am using here, or that is present here, is the Onkyo TX-SR307. And if you have a look at the back, there is also a 3.5mm headphone jack that's called Remote Control. But this is again um, some Onkyo-specific stuff. 
and this is not just um, a voltage output or something it's actually a digital uh, control line so more or less a communication bus so you can plug it into the subwoofer but then it won't do anything it's just um, to let different on -queue devices share one remote control so unfortunately you cannot just use this one there are some higher priced receivers from Onkyo and other companies that specifically have another what's called trigger output. This usually puts out 12 volts so you can use it. But uh, since this is not really um, a re a expensive one by Onkyo, it doesn't have that. So I have to find a way, um, another way to get 12 volts out of this when the amplifier is powered on. So um, I open it up. And when you have a look inside this unit, uh, inside the Onkyo amplifier, you will see that there is a, I will call it AC input board in one of the corners. So the AC from the wall is straight coming in straight here. Then there is an auxiliary transformer that creates um, a very low power 12 volt rail. And then there is this relay. So once you hit the standby button on the front or you put a push, a push you push the power button on the remote control, it will actually engage this relay and this will then turn on the main amplifier, the main transformer and the main amplifier and so on. So um, this relay fortunately is also 12 volts. So this is why I plan to use this. You will notice that there are other relays in the circuit. For example, there are also the relays for the speaker outputs. So um, now you can basically decide when you want your, uh, your subwoofer to turn on. For example, do you want it to turn on as soon as the amplifier itself turns on or maybe only if the center speaker is turned on. So for example, if you're in stereo mode, then the subwoofer will still be off. This is basically up to you and um, you just have to find a 12 volt rail that, that, that is always present when you want the subwoofer to be on. So in my case, since it was quite easy to get this board out and since for my purposes it was enough when the subwoofer turns on always, when the amplifier is turned on, I just used like, the output, like th this relay to also drive my system connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack this in a way that whenever the user activates or switches on the amplifier and this relay engages, that in that case also the uh, system connector is powered and the subwoofer um, comes on. And I'm going to show you how I did this. First I'll show you a little look inside the schematic diagram of this section of the amplifier. So this is this small um, secondary transformer that creates the uh, standby power. So even if the um, amplifier is just plugged in but not turned on. This 12 volt rail is there. And then this relay over here is the relay that actually switches on the rest of the amplifier, so the main transformer and everything else. So as I said, what I want to do is I want to like copy the output of this relay to the, um, to the subwoofer. So I've marked the two power rails here. So um, there is this plus 12 volt standby rail named here. And this is always present at, at one of the pins of the relay. So the 12 volt is always there. But to enable the relay or to switch the amplifier on, what the logic is doing is, is it's, pu it's draw, um, pulling this pin, power D or pin one, which is the other pin of the relay. It's pulling that actually low. So it's bridging that or it's switching that to ground. So um, this means that here over this relay there is 12 volt present when the amplifier is switched on. So this also presents you with a problem when you don't want to use galvanic isolation because when you just connect this straight to your um, system connector the 12 volt will always be present and you will effectively always short the power drain with the main ground. So this wouldn't work because then the um, amplifier would just always stay on because this lower side of the relay is hard bridge to ground. So in this case you actually need to use some kind of galvanic isolation or something between the two devices to make it work. 
In other cases, if for example, um, the lower side of your relay would be always tied to ground and you would switch the high side, then you could just wire it straight up. But if in, like in this case, you're actually switching the low side, it's not possible because the low side always has to be ground on the subwoofer and you cannot have it switchable. So I needed to come, come up with something different. So what I did is I picked um, a DC to DC regulator, which is galvanically isolated. In my case, it's a part by Martek power. Um, so these are like up to five pin DC to DC converters. And the important thing is that they are galvanically isolated and they actually also specify some isolation voltage that it doesn't really matter but the thing is as soon as there is an isolation voltage you know that it's actually isolated so it's good for this purpose and what we need is we need 12 volt input because the relay that we want to copy is uh, has a 12 volt coil and we also want 12 volt output because the system connector and the relay attached to it also require 12 volt. And one part I had lying around was this one. So 112D 12 VFS, input voltage 12, output voltage. And now you see this is actually a uh, symmetrical rail output. So it has a positive and negative 12 volt rail. We don't need the negative volt rail, but you can still use it. And then the power rating, or in this case, the current rating is more than enough. The relay inside the system connector takes roughly 5 to 8 milliamps. So anything above 10 milliamps in the converter is fine. So this is good to go. So and what I did is I went inside the amplifier and actually soldered the input pins of this converter to the, uh, the positive input pin to this side and the negative pin to this power D line. One thing you should do here is um, not solder the positive supply directly to the relay pin because as you can see there is a dropper resistor inside that actually limits the current um, when the relay is switching on. So you don't really want that current limiting, so you should put the positive input to the DC to DC converter before this um, dropping resistor. Op uh, the best way would be to put it straight on the positive pin of that, of that capacitor. And then for the other side, you're going to need to cut a cable. So you can just use any regular three and a half millimeter headphone jack, whether it's mono or stereo, it doesn't really matter. And then you just um, cut it open, you will have the isolation or the, the, the screen of the cable, which is ground. And then depending on how your cable is wired up, e uh, either the white or the red. I thought at first that my cable had the um, white cable for the tip, but actually I had to recut it because it used the red cable for the tip contact. So just recheck that with the multimeter or something. And then you can go in and uh, solder on this DC to DC converter. So here you can see um, this DC to DC converter I used. As I said, it's five pins. So there is this negative rail, which I didn't use. The inputs are coming as I uh, drawn here from the supply of the original relay inside the amplifier. And then the output is going to this headphone jack to the system connector. So in my case, I used the screen as ground for the center pin here, and then the tip, which was going to the red, to plus 12 volt. So then I create a headphone jack that has plus 12 volt on the tip, respectively to ground, when the amplifier is turned on, and zero volts when it's switched off. And since I'm using a galvanically isolated uh, DC to DC converter, I don't have to worry about any uh, ground currents or any voltage levels that are mismatched. I can just safely plug it in. So um, once this is soldered, I just glued it in place inside the amplifier. Um, 
you might wonder if it's a good idea to put a switching regulator inside um, audio amplifier. Well, in theory not, but in practice there are already lots of switching regulators inside a modern um, AV amplifier like this and they're usually operating outside of the audible frequency range so you don't really have to worry about it. But if you're still, you can just put it as far away from the actual amplifier section or the input section of the amplifier, so as I did it right at the back, close to the AC input, since there's already a lot of noise in there and the amplifier should be shielded against that. Then to add a little strain relief to that cable, I just um, pushed it through the same outlet as the mains AC cord comes out, so um, it doesn't move when you when you pull on it and something, so it, um, the solder joints won't get broken this way. Yeah, and then you're basically good to go. You can just plug this cable now inside of the... Um, you can plug this to the system connector port of your subwoofer. And now, whenever you activate your amplifier, which I'll show here in this video, so when you switch the amplifier on, you can see the green light of the subwoofer also comes on. You hear some relays click inside both devices and when you switch off the amplifier, the subwoofer also switches off. So this is quite handy because now you don't have to stand up every time, go to your hi-fi setup and press the hardware button on the subwoofer each time you want to listen to music. You can just turn it on on the remote control of the amplifier. Yeah, and I found out that this works quite well. I don't had any problems with that. Um, so if you want to try it out, you don't have to actually use power from the amplifier. You can also build your own little setup that provides 12 volt. Um, so I don't have any specifications about this connector, but since it's more or less directly connected to this relay inside the subwoofer, which is a typical 12 volt relay, you should be good with any voltages from like 9 to 15 volts. And it's rated at 0.15 watts, which would end up to something like 12 milliamps. But I found out that in my case it consumed only like 6 milliamps. So yeah, you just need a source that's capable of providing that kind of power, but almost any source will do. Yeah, and as I said, um, be aware that the system connector shares the ground with the input, so you cannot just take any 12 volts you get from somewhere, you have to make sure that the 12 volts are either on the same ground potential in the device you're taking them from, or preferably go safe and use one of these DC to DC isolated converters. In this power range, we're talking less than 150 milliwatts. Um, they shouldn't be too expensive, like five bucks or 10 bucks maximum and they are quite reliable and they have all the protection and all the uh, decoupling capacitors inside so you can just solder it on and it works works fine. Yeah, so this is how you can make your Yamaha subwoofer or Yamaha whatever device that has a system connector work with any other brand component like in this case an ONC amplifier but it will work with any other amplifier you just have to find either have to find a 12 volt rail inside that you can use or you can even look for another rail like 24 or 5 volts and then use another DC to DC converter that converts that voltage to the 12 volts that the system connector needs. Okay, so I hope this was not too confusing and I hope you got the idea. And if you try it yourself, I wish you the best luck. Thanks for watching.